The image of the black woman has consistently been complicated. So, you know, you get the mammy image, right? And that mammy image was one, you know, the kind of Aunt Jemima. Uh, the mammy image, coming from slave days, was one who was really good to massa, but knew how to control her own people, particularly knew how to control uh, the man in the slave community. Um, and, and so, where she's like all huggy, snuggly with the white child and yes, whatever you need. When, it, when, it, when she was back in the slave cabin, she's dominating, domineering. You have the concept of the African woman as the Jezebel. She free with herself. And then you have the mammy complex where you have the heaviest set woman Neither one of them is wrong, neither one of them is bad. That might just be their attitude. But they could be good, solid people. But in order to assuage your conscience, in order to make you feel better about yourself as to why you raped her or why you beat her or why you treat her the way you do, you say, well, she ain't nothing anyway. So that's how I'm, I'm going to make myself feel better while I mistreat her. Their sex is um, promiscuous, right? And how do you know? Well, this is literally out of a medical journal. Their protruding buttocks and genitals were offered as evidence of their pathology of lust. Because they had big butts. We accept you as you are exactly, and you are beautiful to us in that way. But we don't believe that because of outside interference. And so they've given us this artificiality as a, a concept of what beauty is. And so we want to have all these other things which are still mimicking white women. We have seen hot combs in Egypt. African women did use hot combs on their hair. But they did not have a woman of European descent who they were emulating to look like that. 6% of America's population, 98% of fibroids in America, black women, the next highest group, Jewish women, what they got in common, nappy hair. How come my mother never heard of fibroids? How come they didn't get fibroids? You can't catch it, it ain't a disease. How are we getting it? Perms! When we start using perms, those chemicals go through my skull. And that's how I get fibroids. Now, fortunately, there is a trend out there where black the sisters are coming back natural a little bit. Now, part of that was voluntary, and the other part is that those perms have burned up and messed their hair up a lot. They're having to go natural now. And the other thing is that wearing those tight braids on the side of their head has pulled out spots around their hair. Some of them, the hairline starting back there, you know, because of the braids being so tight. We're not in the African sun. It's not creating the same type of oils on our scalp as here in the hills of North America, where you have four different seasons seasons and terrible weather. And so that hasn't worked on our hair, even though, you know, uh, and some of that hair is made from raccoons, horses, hyenas. It's made from anything, and they put it together, ship it over here, and sell it to us. I was getting a doll for one of my daughters. There was a white mother and a white girl, little girl, in the doll section. And the mother said, you can have any doll you want. I saw, you know, I just watched the little girl. She was walking around, and I was looking at dolls, too, and I was looking to see which one. And all of a sudden, the little girl took a brown doll, a black doll. And the mother said to her, why do you want that doll? She said, because it's pretty. She said, no, it ain't pretty. And not only that, it don't look like you. That's what a white mother told a white child. It don't look like you, and it's not a pretty doll. What happens to the black child? When that young white girl meets that black child, what's been ingrained in that little girl's head? See, the adults are the problem. We have more power as black women than we will ever understand that we have. And so they come to the people with the power when they want to control a group or a nationality. Teach a child that you are beautiful. I had a little girl say to me, my nose is too big. I said, well, can you breathe? She said, yeah, I can breathe. I said, well, your nose is just right. When they make baby food, they really make it for the mother, because the mother's not going to give the baby nothing that she don't like. So the baby ain't never had sugar and salt, pepper, and chemicals. <laughs> so the baby is sitting in your lap, and you feeding it, and they see that white baby on there. You don't see it. They see it. And every time she puts in there a good feeling run through their body, now they got tests that you can flash a white child and a good feeling to run through your back even after you've grown. Slave mistress 
She didn't allow black women to nurse her baby because she didn't produce milk because nature will produce milk in a woman's breast if she has a child. So they had their own breast milk, but it was not the same nutrients as that black breast milk. And that's why they put their babies to our breasts, so that we could give them all the nutrients and put all of those vitamins and everything into that child that they needed so it would grow up strong and healthy like our babies were. There's a case called the Buck versus Bell case that makes it perfectly legal for the government to sterilize a person without their consent and they can sterilize people they deem as undesirables. And that case has never been overturned. That case came from 1927. And right now, a lot of African-American women are being sterilized in prison. A lot of African-American women are being sterilized with birth control. So a lot of people don't realize that the sterilization process is real and is perfectly legal in a lot of cases. And they're not only coming after us for birth control and get us to, to uh, sterilize ourselves so we can't produce, they're coming after us for our stem cells because this is what the white scientific industry is using now in order to come up with all of these new technologies and discoveries about how to save their lives, how to be youthful, how to do heart repair without surgery and all of that. All of that comes from stem cells, hysterectomies of the 70s and 80s. See, that was the way to sterilize black women then. Oh, the, every other black woman you met had had a hysterectomy, okay? Just take the, all of the organs out and don't have to deal with it. When I say slavery is to you in America, you, what, did, what do you, mentally, what do you see? You see black men and women with things on their neck, you know, chains and on their feet so they can't run away, you know? That's what you see. Uh, you don't see that on children. Children are gonna follow their parents. You see children running free, following behind their parents. The 1700s, there was an act called the Casual Killing Act in Virginia. And what this was, was a law that said that if you killed someone black as a result of correcting them, but it would not be considered a felony, but anyone accused, so giving that, a, that punishment would be basically free of any punishment or any, um, wrong do or any wrongdoing, called the Casual Killing Act. Stay with me. That means you are killing, beating people to death, essentially. What we're talking about here is folks that were beating people to death to such a degree that you had to create a law to protect you from it. Now then, of course, if one looks closely, we go, who then was, were they trying to protect that, were, that was beating someone to death so frequently that you needed a law to protect them. And that would be white women who were beating black children to death. Because, well, whose children were they really? There's the case down in South Carolina where um, the police had rounded up this woman's husband. She went down to the jail talking about, you know, my man didn't do this. You let him go. Well, she didn't know her place. She was eight months pregnant. She didn't know her place. The lynch mob took her, stripped her naked, strung her up. They notice as she's gagging, because you know, she's, they're hanging her, is that her stomach, because she's naked, is quivering. So they get a knife and they slice her belly open. The eight month baby comes out and they stomp on the baby's head. Nothing happens. The youngest person electrocuted in this country to receive capital punishment by the government was a young African-American 14-year-old boy named George Stinney, and he was falsely accused of killing two white girls. Recently, the government is trying to issue a pardon for him, and that's what they do a lot of times. When we suffer injustice, they'll wait 50 or 60 years in order to give a pardon or to um, try to right the wrong after the fact. I think they'll try to probably do that with Trayvon Martin 40 years from now. That was sad what happened to Trayvon Martin and I felt so badly for his parents. Nobody wants to outlive their children, okay? But do you hear his name anymore? Very rare. And one of the other reasons is that they started a Trayvon Martin Foundation. Well, blacks ain't got no foundations unless they're supported by white money, okay? And part of the agreement for the foundation is that no more of that race stuff. We're gonna work for the humanity of man. We're gonna work so we can all get along and in unity or something. You know, all of us are the same. And that's the nonsense you go. And so his parents had to pull back on that talk they were talking at first. So about four or five black police officers, big guys, I'll never forget, because I looked up and they like had muscles on top of muscles. These are some big brothers. And they showed up 
and um, I'm assuming they want a book or something. And this guy has a stack of eight by 10 glossy pictures and he hands them to me, but they slide and they're all lynchings. And I didn't look at them at first. I'm going, well, yeah, I'm, you know, I'm really familiar with lynchings, done a lot of research. He goes, no, no, you're not familiar with these. So I look at them in their contemporary lynchings. He says, they're telling us these are suicides. And you're seeing all these different bodies of black, all black males. He worked in a drugstore and he sent uh, a white girl that he worked with a Christmas card. Her father clocked. Her father got the lynch mob together. They grabbed that 14-year-old boy and they grabbed the boy's father. They went out to the bridge. They beat the crap out of that boy. They tied his hands. They bound his feet. They yanked the father's head to force the father to watch as they threw the boy into the water, alive with his hands bound and feet bound, to watch his son drown. 